are two sisters who believe that the purpose of life is to enjoy, create, and have fun. We believe that as humans, we can have anything we want, and things are always working out for us. Experience has taught us that the path to getting everything we want begins with ease. If you believe in miracles and happily ever after, or even if you just want to, then this is the podcast for you. Hi there, I'm your host, Kayla Rain. And I'm Adria Shea. And welcome back to Attract It With Ease. Adria, it's so good to see you. You too, thanks. As usual, I'd like to start out by asking you, what are you grateful for today and why? My first one is family. Um, I, especially big families. I come from a big family. I have a big family. And I think it's amazing. I mean, family, family's great because hopefully your family always has your back. They're always your support system and you always have to turn to and loved. And when it's a big family, then, you know, there's multiple people that can buoy you up emotionally in different ways and love and support you. So I'm very, very grateful for that today. Oh, I love that. So I have five things I'm grateful for today. Any guesses oh, on go what for they are? It. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, wait out, shine me. <laughs> so mine are my five senses, my sight, my my ability to hear, sound, my smell, uh, being able to taste and touch things. I am so yes. grateful that I have all five senses, and I wouldn't want to give up a single one of them. I am so grateful to be able to see the sunrise and the sunset. I love being able to hear your voice and to listen to music and listen to podcasts. I love the taste of good food, Mexican takeout, (laughs) whatever the case may be. I love touch. I love having my back scratched, my feet rubbed. I love the way that my pillow feels against my head at night. Oh, yes. And I love smell when it's good smells. I love fresh baked cookies. I love flowers. I just, I'm Mm -hmm. so grateful for my five senses. That's a great one. So, Adria, um, today I wanted to come circle back around to something that you asked me in I don't know, one of our earlier episodes, and you asked me a question that I think is great for just a whole episode. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to turn this question into a whole episode. And the question was something along the lines of, Kayla, what do you do if you're just not feeling grateful? I think this was back on our gratitude episode. And you said, but what if you're just not really feeling very grateful? Then what do you do? Do you remember that? I do. (laughs) I have minutes like that. (laughs) So this episode is titled, Do It Because It Feels Good. (laughs) Mm. So this episode is all about what I refer to as choosing a better feeling thought. In other words, there are times when maybe you can't jump right from feeling sorry for yourself into a state of gratitude. There are, let's be realistic, there are times in life when we're sad, when we're depressed, when we're um, at our lowest point. Some of us deal with um, anxiety and depression and mental health issues. And it's a real thing. And I don't think it's fair to pretend, like I've said before, that life is all butterflies and roses and unicorns or whatever, because as much as we'd like it to be that, and as much as we want to attract that, we're all still going to have bad days. And depending on what we're going through, sometimes it's more than just a day. Sometimes it's like something we're really, really struggling with and going through. And it can be hard to pull yourself out of that and get into that good feeling, positive, happy state by, by, you know, focusing on gratitude or something else, uh, flipping it around and saying something positive. So I want to be real in this episode and just talk about the fact of the matter, which is sometimes we're going to have those, those bad moments. So what do you do in those moments? And the answer to that is to choose a better feeling thought. So let's talk about what that means, choose a better feeling thought. Let me just give kind of an example. 
if you're feeling like, let me think. If you're, let's say you have a fight with your significant other and you're sitting there feeling like, oh, this is never going to work. Our relationship is over. If we can't work through this, this is never going to work. And you're stuck in that mindset Mm -hmm. and you can't get to feeling grateful for your significant other and feeling like, oh, I'm so happy that we're married and we have this amazing relationship. Maybe it's like you have serious problems. So how do you, how do you get from this relationship is not going to work to the place of being grateful for your spouse? And that begins with trying to focus on a thought that feels better than this is never going to work. So let's, let's talk about just a slightly better feeling thought, Adria, what, what could you say that's an improvement above this is never going to work? Well, what comes to mind would be kind of a stretch for me in the moment, to be honest. Um, What comes to mind is something like this person I've had good times with this person before. Like there have been times I have felt heard and loved by this person. But honestly, I don't know that my mind is going to go there if I'm feeling frustrated and unloved. Okay. And that's fair. And it's probably not. So if your mind isn't going to go there, where could your mind go when you're feeling like this, this relationship is doomed? It's, it's not going to work out. What would, what would be something you could think that would feel better? <laughs> I know it's tough. It's tough. And that's why we're talking about it. And I'm yeah, yeah. setting you up as usual by not giving you any of the answers, but here's yeah. something out of the box. And this isn't the answer every time, because often you can think something a little bit better feeling, which is like, maybe you can just feel like, you know what, this is temporary. We normally don't fight like this. This is a bad fight, but it's not, we're not going to stay here. It's, it's not always going to be here. Maybe that's the thought, but maybe okay. that's not the case. Maybe you're, maybe you, you ha- you're always fighting. Maybe you are at the end of your relationship. Maybe you really feel like this is not going to work. Well, that is a sucky feeling. Nobody wants to feel that. So what feels better? Well, I'll tell you what, what feels better is thinking about a vacation in Mexico, going to Disneyland. Yeah. Not even necessarily with that person, but like just even totally shifting your mind from the negative thought to something that actually feels good, that alone increases your vibration and takes you from this, oh, woe is me, poor me state. And yes, this is going to come across as, oh, just ignore your problems. Don't deal with anything. Just, But to a certain degree, there's actually a lot of benefit in doing that if you can constantly shift your vibration from that deep, dark, negative space to something that doesn't feel deep, dark, and negative, even if it's just temporarily, you're giving yourself that emotional break where, number one, you can change your attraction point and what you're putting out into the universe. But number two, sometimes it just gives your mind and your subconscious some space to try and process what actually is going on and also Mm -hmm. almost puts like a pause on the situation, kind of like, okay, well, It's not fixing itself, but we're just going to pause. And sometimes just taking that pause, just time and space and letting things simmer a little bit, things start to resolve in a sense, because it gives both parties a chance to think in this situation, it's both parties. Not every situation is going to involve two people, but in this scenario it does. And so instead of like feeling like, oh, I've got to deal with this right now. I've got this, ter-, you know, it just feels mm-hmm. terrible and it keeps you up late at night. And then you're crying and you're worrying. And you've got to talk to people and you're exasper. How do you say that? Exasperating? Exasper- Exas- <laughs> Exasperating? <laughs> I'm not sure which word you're using. You're exacerbating the situation yep, or you're the exasperating? Word. <laughs> both. I'm both. Yes. <laughs> All of it, all of it. it. But basically, that's what we have a tendency to do is we get in these moments and then we build and we build and it feels huge. And, and that's where the anxiety comes in. And that's where we just like can't almost can't even get out of bed because it's just like we have like just sulked and sat in this emotion and this feeling that's so negative. And whereas if we could just like 
put a pause on it and to be like, okay, I'm just going to like, I'm not ignoring this, but I'm setting it over here for a minute. Yeah. And guess what? It feels better to listen to this music that I love and I'm just going to turn it on and I'm not going to think about the situation. I'm not going to think about the argument. I'm not going to think about that person. Yeah. I'm going to watch a rom-com. Maybe not, maybe romance isn't what you need <laughs> in the moment. Maybe it's a <laughs> Adam Sandler film or something. I don't know, but something that is a better feeling thought, even if it's a, a temporary distraction. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's one thing that you can do. So I did totally kind of set you up there, but sometimes you literally can just think a little bit better about the person or the situation. And like you said, kind of find some gratitude for it. Like, oh, well, <laughs> it's not always like this. And other times you can't. And when you can't yeah. try and try and like close that off and like, don't just lock it in a closet and don't deal with it. I'm not trying to say don't deal with your problems ever and ignore everything. But what I am saying is when you're at that lowest low, try and find a distraction or something that feels better and move there until you can deal with that feeling and that emotion. Mm -hmm. So I have a confession (laughs) that I'm going to share with you and all of our listeners, all probably all 2 million listeners. Yes. The millions of you out there who don't know me and may or may not care, but I have said from the beginning that I have been studying and working on the law of attraction for, I don't know, 15 plus years. I can't, I don't even know how long it's been. And I've also said that, I myself have struggled during that time. I've I've not been perfect. I'm still not perfect. And I want to share some of the things that I've gone through and how it relates to this choosing a better feeling thought, but also to give you some perspective on how far I've come in the things that I've been able to manifest. Because yeah, I don't have a mansion and I don't have a boat. They're not things I'm necessarily seeking. But you could look at me and say, she doesn't have all these amazing things. So how does she think that she's this expert on the law of attraction? And I don't even know that I am an expert, but I can say that I have manifested some crazy, crazy, crazy things for myself. But I've also overcome some crazy, crazy things for myself. And so what I want to share is that there have been probably three different periods in my life that I can think back on when I have suffered or struggled with um, depression and anxiety. And in each of those periods of my life, I had suicidal thoughts. I was um, going through personal things. And I will say that they were somewhat situational. In other words, I do think that I have some chemical issues from time to time, but I think that situations that I found myself in, which in hindsight, I can see that I put myself in, um, I I take ownership of that, but I, I was in a negative place more than once. And when things just get really, really bad, a lot of times where we go mentally is, is it even worth it? Do I want to be here? Um, how am I ever going to get through this? If I can't get through it, what's life going to look like? Do I even want that? Maybe I should just make it easy and things now, right? These, these thoughts are, are things that I've had. And the most recent of those three experiences was a period of my life when I was in a toxic relationship. And I'm not someone that would ever say anything negative about my ex, but it was toxic for me and and this the situation that i was in and i just was a totally different person than i am right now and i allowed myself to to go through things that no one should allow themselves to go through but it, i got so broken and to a place where i felt worthless and i didn't know how how to and I apologize. I, I knew this was going to be an emotional conversation for me. And I'm, I know I'm being vague and I will try not to be super vague about things, but I just don't want to share too many details that relate to it, someone else. Um, but I just didn't know how to, to get out of the situation 
that I was in, but I also felt like I was just nothing. I was, I was worthless. I, I felt so unloved and so unhappy and so, so stuck that I just kept thinking about killing myself. And I remember sitting in my living room and being able to see the staircase. And every day I would sit on my couch and I would look at the stairs and I would think about hanging myself. And I would just, I would just look at them every day. And every day I would just think I could just, I could just do it. I could just, I could just go. I could just hang myself. And I realized, recognized that that was unhealthy, and I was working on the law of attraction and trying to work through some things. So it was this unique dichotomy of trying to work on self-improvement and be this better person, but some of that was coming from how um, worthless I was feeling. And so I really focused on trying to choose a better feeling thought, and I really struggled with how to overcome that thought because I had it every day and every time I sat on the couch and looked at my staircase, that was what I would think. And so the thought that I decided to choose was, I don't have to do it today. I don't have to do it today. That was, for a long time, that was the only thought that I could think that felt better. It wasn't that I wasn't going to do it. It wasn't that it it wasn't right. I I wasn't in a place that I could say, my life is amazing. It's wonderful. It's going to be okay. You know, it's going to get better. I didn't believe that. But I, I was able to think it doesn't have to be today. If I still feel like this tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. And that was my thought day after day. Every day I would think I don't have to do it today. There's no rush. There's no rush. I don't have to do it today. And that got me through. And then it came to a point when things got really bad. And I actually decided one day after a big argument uh, that got physical, I just, I was done. And part of me wanted to do it to hurt him. And part of me wanted to do it just because I didn't want to deal with it anymore. And so I planned and I I wasn't able to do, I wasn't able to hang myself because he was home. So I had to come up with a different, a different route. Right. And so I planned to kill myself and I went to the store and I got the things that I would need and I locked myself in the bathroom and I made an attempt and um, I don't know, I don't know why, but he came up to talk to me at some point, found me unconscious, called the police and short version of the story is I ended up in a mental hospital and it was horrible. It was, it was so horrible. Physically, I felt horrible because of what my body was going through from from what I had done. And I felt horrible about not being successful. I felt horrible about being stuck. I was in this mental hospital. And then I'm I was put on a 5250, which is being held against your will for 72 hours. And was told that I had to speak to a psychiatrist before I could be released. And the way that that works, they make you wait 72 hours to see somebody. You don't get to see somebody an hour in. So for three days straight, I was on lockdown, had no rights, no privileges, no possessions, um, carefully watched, treated like I was a criminal, like I was crazy, surrounded by all of these people who really had lost their mind. And again, I'm not trying to say anything negative about anyone else, but just, you know, in a, in a place where people, some people were 
you know, rocking back and forth as they sat, people that talked to themselves and people that just had these unfortunate things going on. And I just kept thinking to myself, I don't belong here. I don't belong here. And, and yet I had no rights. I, I couldn't leave. And I still just sat there feeling like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> Not just, I don't want to be in this hospital, but I don't, I don't want to be here. But over three days, I was able to shift my thinking to, number one, how am I going to get myself out of here? Because if I don't have a good interview with the psychiatrist, he's not going to let me go. I'm going to be stuck here. So number one, I have to play the game, right? I have to figure out how to convince him that I'm not insane and I'm not a threat to my own life. And part of me thought, if it's just going to go back to how it was when I get out, then I am a threat to my own life. You know, I, I, I can't go back to that. And so I had to work on number one, what my plan was, but number two, I had to change my thinking about the situation if I was going to get out of the situation. And so I remember kind of making a, I guess like an agreement with God. Just basically like I would never take my life for granted again. I would never take my life for granted again if he would if he would help me get out of that situation. I just I just basically said like look if you if you will help me get out of here, I promise I won't take my life for granted. I promise I'll turn it around. I promise I'll I will I will I will change things. I will do what I need to to not be in this situation anymore. And just that thought of feeling like there was maybe some hope and just making that commitment of, hey, I'm, it is going to be different. I'm going to make sure it's different. I don't know how, but but I'm going to do that. That was my better feeling thought. And and then feeling like, okay, I have this pact <laughs> with God, <laughs> the universe, whoever, right? I have this pact that if I will do this if I can get out. And I did. I got out in three days. And then I felt like, okay, it's it's a pact. I made a promise. I can't go back on it, right? Or I'm just going to end up back in the same place. And so that allowed me to then work on, okay, how am I going to change this? And that begins with choosing a better feeling thought. It's choosing instead of feeling stuck, okay, I have, I have the power to change this. How am I going to change this? What's going to be different? And, and just helping me formulate a plan to improve my situation. And I, I'll be honest, it didn't happen overnight. And I didn't get out of that relationship for another, I don't know, maybe, I, I can't even tell you for sure, probably nine months. But I can tell you that since that situation, I have not had that thought anymore of, that I don't want to be here anymore. And I can't promise I won't ever have that thought again because I feel like some of that is chemical. But I do know that just by choosing to think differently, choosing to believe that there were options, that there that I have control, that it is my choice, believing that that there could be a positive outcome, then created a positive outcome. And um, Adria, I know you've just been kind of sitting there listening and some of this you may or may not have heard before because I haven't shared a lot with many people because it's not a piece of my life or a part of my life that I'm very proud of. But um, in relation to choosing a better thought or, wh- or what I've said, give me some feedback. Well, thank you for sharing your story. I think that it's very brave. And 
you said that it's not something, I can't remember how you said it, it's not something you're proud of or some, not something that you feel good about. And yet the strength that you exhibited, it, it really is a triumph, I think. And a perfect example of just those baby steps. And we talked about sometimes just choosing a thought that's incrementally better or shift your focus just a little bit is the first step. And I don't think that anyone that sees now how happy and vibrant and joyous you are would would have suspected that. I mean, I say that because you've taken those little steps and come so far over time to very different mindset. Well, from where I was in my life at that point, and thank you for that compliment. I appreciate that and that um, acknowledgement because I'm a, I'm a completely different person. I have, when I got out of that relationship, I spent nine months truly working on myself. And I know people say that, but I (laughs) was like on lockdown in my house. And I don't mean that in the literal sense, but um, during that period, I was unemployed. I had a car that was having car problems, so I didn't feel like I could drive it. I, money was tight. And so I just... I found myself single by choice, which was a good thing. And I just knew, look, I I don't want to be this girl anymore. I don't want to I don't want to find myself ever in this situation again. I don't like who I was. I don't like what I tolerated. I don't like what the things that I did or agreed to or the way I behaved and I've got to figure out what is going on with me that allowed me to go there. And so during that nine month period, I really, really focused on the law of attraction in the sense of I've got to pull it all apart and figure out who I am at my core and who I want to be. And, and, and it, I kind of built my life from there by literally, like we've talked about with vision boards and everything, defining what do I want life to look like? I, I know I don't want that. So what is it that I do want? What is the relationship that I want? And as you know, I'm engaged to Dan. We have this amazing, healthy relationship. That's nothing like any relationship I've ever had. I, you know, I have this job that I love and I've had a couple of jobs in between then and now, but I'm, I'm so satisfied with my job. I'm so happy. Um, I've, I've just traveled like crazy in the last few years. This year has been interesting with COVID, but <laughs> I still, I, I just have this life of adventure and fun and love and appreciation and gratitude and all of these things. And it's funny because if you did, if you looked at who I am today and what my life looks like today and compared mm-hmm. it in contrast to that life, which honestly, that life to an outsider, people probably would have thought that I was happy and I was a positive person Mm -hmm. on the outside. But what I was dealing with on the inside was a person that was broken and didn't even want to be on this planet. And so in contrast, it's like night and day different, but it really, I can credit it all to my studies and practice in law of attraction because I decided I'm going to build a life that I love and I'm going to attract all of the things that I do want and not the things that I don't want. And honestly, at that lowest of lows, when I not only tried to take my own life, but then found myself in a mental hospital because it didn't work. (laughs) I I can't even imagine really a worse place, Uh, maybe jail. But, you know, it it felt like gel because I had no rights. I had no privileges. I had people watching over me and checking in on me and telling me when I could shower. And I couldn't use a razor because I was at a risk. (laughs) You know, like it Mm -hmm. it was a very similar situation. And I can't really imagine a worse situation than that. And to be able to just incrementally choose something that felt a little bit better, starting to believe that there was hope and then building off of that belief into okay, now I'm going to try and put together a plan. Okay, now I have this plan. What are the things that I have to do to make, to change this? And, and it Mm -hmm. grew into, and it's been, like I said, it's been several years. I can't even tell you how many years that's been. It's, it's, I mean, seven maybe years, but, um, 
it's turned into this amazing, incredible, wonderful life that I have. And like you said, the the positive, glowing, fun person that I believe I am. Yes, you are. <laughs> So, um, I don't know, maybe we've exhausted this conversation, but, um, I think when it comes to choosing that better feeling thought, it's, it's, it's it's important to number one, acknowledge when we're, we have that negative thought and it's not always going to be, Oh, I'm, I'm depressed. I want to take my life. I want, I mean, yes, sometimes people will go there. Not everyone will, not everyone can relate to that, but it could literally just be like, like I said, you you had a terrible argument with someone or you just lost your job or you got in a car accident and you don't know how you're going to pay for it. Or, I mean, there's just all these things that happen in life and you can find yourself in these situations where you just feel like, oh, there's no way out or how do I fix this? Or I don't know what to do or it's hopeless or I feel helpless. You know, there's just so many of those situations and it's figuring out Number one, can you feel differently or look at the situation differently and find the positive? Can you focus on gratitude? And if you cannot, if it is at a place where you just feel so bad and so terrible, then try, like I said, setting it aside for a bit and trying to shift your mind to something completely unrelated that feels better. Mm -hmm. And allow that to kind of simmer for a little bit before you come back to it. And maybe it's this back and forth ping pong where you focus on a better feeling thought, you feel better for a little while, and then you go back to it and it still feels like crap. So then you focus on a new feeling thought. And you, but I promise as you, as you start to do that, um, there's a concept called psycho-cybernetics that talks about how our subconscious goes to work for us when we're asleep or not thinking about things that our subconscious is actually what creates um, solutions and answers for us. It's that whole concept of when you're watching a movie or a television show and you're like, what's that guy's name? Where do I know him from? He's so familiar. Where, what is he, what is he in? And then you just can't think of the name and then you go to sleep and the next morning you're like, Oh, that's who he is. He's in that show. And it's, it's that whole piece where your subconscious figures things out for you. Well, that, that piece will go to work in this kind of a situation when you feel helpless and you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get out of this. I don't have an answer. I promise you just putting it on pause. I'm not saying you'll get an answer that first time, but if you can get in the habit of shifting that emotion, focusing on something else, increasing your vibration, not only will you feel good at least temporarily or feel better temporarily, but your subconscious will start working on the solution and figuring it out. And you also will be attracting better things, good things, just by changing your vibration to that higher vibration. And yeah, it may not be like, oh, my life is amazing. It's perfect. And I love everybody. And you might not be there yet, but just being out of the state of, oh my gosh, there is no answer means that you're attracting an answer. Just mm-hmm. by shifting that emotion. Do you have any final words on this topic, Adria? No, but I, I love the concept. And it's one I think everybody can relate to because no matter who it is, we've all gone through periods where we're, where we're really struggling mentally. And to know that we have the power to pivot just a little bit is really powerful, I think. It is powerful. I agree with you. And I just want to say this before we give our action item to our listeners. Number one, there's always an answer. Even when it feels like there's not an answer, there's always an answer. And there's always resources. So if you ever find yourself in a situation like I've been in, reach out. You know, you can, I know that I can relate and I'm here. Anyone that wants to email me or message us, or you can reach out through Instagram, you can reach out through our website, whatever. Number one, we're here for you, but I promise you other people are here for you. There's always a solution. And number two, it will get better. Everything is temporary. And if you can just believe and remember, things are always working out for you. 
it, it'll come around. It'll come around. It always does. So I would just want to put that out there. And then next, I want to give our action item for this week's episode to our listeners. And I will be honest, this was a tricky one for me to come up with an action item for, because it's like, how do you make a, a homework assignment, so to speak, out of this concept? And so as Adria and I talked about it, I think what we came up with is for you to choose one day, just pick a day, pay attention to your thoughts throughout the day, good or bad. And every time you have a negative thought, every single time, you know, we've talked about flipping the script. That's part of choosing a better feeling thought, but focus on every time throughout the day, you have a negative thought and try and think of a better feeling thought. If you can completely turn it around and think of something positive, awesome. If you can't, try and think of something that feels better. Focus on something that feels better and pay attention to that for a full day. And then in the evening before you go to bed, pull out your workbook and record everything that you can remember that was a negative thought you turned around that day. And Adria had a great suggestion, which was, you know what, maybe start a note in your phone to help you keep track so that it's not just getting to bed and going, oh, I know there was some stuff. What was it? Maybe just start a note in your phone and just have a memo or a note. And just every time you have a negative thought, write what that was down. And then you can refer to that and put it in your workbook. And it's kind of like, well, why would I write it down twice? But by having it in your workbook, you can, again, go back and look at the things that you're working on, be reminded of these episodes and the things that will help move you forward. And it will be a tool that you can use as a resource again and again and again. So we will have a page in the workbook. We do have a page in the workbook for you where you can record kind of your experience throughout that 24-hour period of all of the negative thoughts. It's interesting to see how many we have because that's how we're programmed as humans. We're programmed <laughs> to look for the negative instead of look for the positive. And so we are trying to break that habit. It'll be interesting to see how many negative thoughts you have and then how wonderful it'll be to turn each of those around. So that's our action item for you. Adria, do you want to tell them about our giveaway? Yes, we want to encourage everybody to give us feedback on our podcast and write us a review, positive or negative. We're looking for your honest feedback. Each week, we will draw one name from the people who have reviewed the podcast and contact that person, send that person a custom-made bracelet with their theme word of the year. Yes, 52 people. You guys are winners. Yes. We're going to send you a bracelet. And then just one last reminder, all 10 of the first episodes, episodes one through 10 are our jumpstart module. They are designed to go together as a package. We have a free workbook for you. You can download from our website, download the workbook, download those first 10 episodes and start attracting everything your heart desires. Thank yes, you for website. listening. I'm oh, yeah. going to tell them our website. It's yes. www.attractitwithease.com. Attract it with ease. So thank you for joining us this week. We look forward to talking with you soon. Adria, thanks for your help. Have a good night. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.